All right, so I'm I'm up here in the attic, and I've got just an interesting kind of setup here um, that I wanted to go over, and that is mainly if you look if you look over here, they've got the water heater, but down here there is a hot plate. This is uh, manufactured by Heat Pipe Technology Inc. Um, I haven't seen one of these anywhere else, but basically it's a heat exchange unit. From what I can figure out, it's got the return line on the AC system, okay, coming over and going down into the hot plate. And then it's also got the drain line plumbed in down to this heat exchange and then the water comes out and connects to the hot water of the house. I don't really understand why you would have this kind of setup because when these AC lines are taking heat out of the system after it's, you know, the cold from the AC line has gone into the coils, the heat is being pulled out and taken outside to be cooled down again and then brought back in. But these lines rarely get above 100 degrees, whereas the water in this tank is being heated to about 120, maybe a little bit more, depending on where the setting is. So, if anything, this type of system seems like it would be exchanging the hot water that you're heating and putting more heat into the return line of the AC and taking it out, which you don't want that. On your AC line, you want these to be warm you know, to show that they're actually removing heat from the air, but you don't want them hot because then the system outside needs to run more to cool it down. So, I don't know, if someone in the comments could tell me what the benefit might be of this, or maybe there is no benefit, and that's why I've never seen one of them anywhere else. So the line is coming out, comes up and over, and then it goes down, comes back out. It's just kind of a circulation free system you've got the drain goes in and it comes out right here so it's not like it's it's pulling a ton of water through here because the regular output up top is just going through and out into the system so this is just coming in and I really don't understand what kind of benefit someone thought they might be getting from a system like this but anyways, this unit is going to be replaced and it's got some other issues with it. This three quarter PVC here is actually bowing up to get over that strong back so that this over here is lower. The water wouldn't even be able to get out before it starts coming over the side of it. A pan for an AC system has a three quarter inch line because it might sweat, but sweating is not dumping pressurized water from a 50 gallon tank. Anyways, that needs to be fixed. One inch line going all the way out. You can see lots of corrosion in some places. They, they didn't do a very good job on their soldering. They used just tons of it, tons and tons. Um, really need to have it protected with a whip. I have wondered in this setup, would all the sediment be going down into these pipes and just kind of sitting down here? Like could some of this corrosion be from just mix of metals and sediment and who knows what kind of reactions going on down here to where just the whole bottom of the pipes and everything are just occluded with sediment but that's something that we will see when i cut these off because i'm not going to be reusing the hot plate you can see there is sediment not a ton but i mean this is even after flushing it it does not seem like there was enough flow of water from inside the tank down through here to, to carry any sediment into this uh, heat exchange unit. So we are back after the old tank was taken out and we've installed two water heaters and they are installed in series. Really you just need enough space in your circuit panel to be able to add on another 240 volt circuit breaker should probably just bring you over here so you can kind of see things close up. So we've got cold water coming in right here. Comes down. So cold coming in. Then hot coming out. Hot comes over. And comes into the cold inlet of the second unit. And then hot goes out 
and that is what goes into the house. So it's very simple, you're just adding a second unit. This really is my preferred method of doing this because, as I said before, if you want to set that one to 120 degrees and this one to 140, you know, because you, you're going to use a lot of water at certain times, but you don't need to always running at 140 degrees. Sorry, he says he wants more battery. This will allow you to change out this water heater if needed or this one and it won't mess anything up if you get a smaller tank, a bigger tank, a different model, or anything like that. So this is an easier install. The downside to this is that you don't get to utilize both burners equally. All right, so if you look over here, I've got this hanger clamp here, okay, with the uh, with a ceiling plate. Is this supporting it as well as it could from the ceiling? No, it's not. But is the 3 8 rod sturdy enough to do this? Yeah, it is. Because this right here, the only reason why I've even got it supported is because it's got two flexible supply lines coming from both tanks going into both tanks and over time they could just flop down from the heat they'd eventually start sagging and I'd rather keep them in this nice arched position because water flow will be completely uninhibited so that's why it's up like this so that it's just a nice flow from one to the other you don't ever want to put any any competing metals against other metals so copper and galvanized iron you never mix them because electrolysis will happen even with these uh, hangers here you don't want to have them come in contact with copper and also there's no break in the insulation either so I like to put clamps over over my insulation I don't like to clamp the pipe directly and then try to get insulation around it because then you've got a break in your insulation and you're just losing a little bit of heat at that joint. Now, will an inspector approve that? Some inspectors only want something used the way it is described to be used. And not that inspectors are bad, it's just that sometimes inspectors can go above and beyond them trying to make sure that things are safe to where they're just being picky off that soapbox. If you're worried about Legionnaire's disease, you know, keep keep your primary set to at least 120 degrees, keep your secondary at 140, and you won't have to worry about Legionella growing in the bottom of your tank. Just another setup of electric in-series water heaters.